So this uh, graph here comes from Wikipedia, which as I pointed out is a font, font, font of wisdom. And it gives a nice plot here showing you the chance of various things happening. It says that 68% of the time you will lie between mean minus one sigma and mean plus one sigma. If you want, want to do two sigma, then you have an additional 13.6% either side. And if you go between two sigma and three sigma, that's 2.1%. So it's if it's either side, it's 4.2%. <clears throat> then there's a pretty small probability of being three sigma, 0.1% either way. No, the one little subtlety, that sounds very small, but if we make a thousand histogram bins, <coughs> we have 0.1% either side, that's uh, actually around two, two histogram bins will be three sigma away from their mean. So you need to worry a little in interpreting the significance of the results by asking how many, how many um, Histogram bins, or how many how many results they actually look at. If you look at enough results, you'll always see interesting effects. Um, so now we can ask whether this stuff uh, possible errors in this in this uh, type of analysis. And there are two types of errors, or at least two types of errors. These are two most important. There is sort of a mathematical error, namely the Gaussian distribution and the mean, and the error being square root of n. That's an asymptotic result. It's not uh, true in a sort of finite, um, realistic case. It's just, but typically the errors here are small. Even for 25 uh, uh, as the mean result, we still got um, pretty uh, reasonable answers. And so this mathematical corrections are a not very big in most cases, and also not not very important in the sense that they're easy to correct for. Because mathematics, you can just um, there are many people you just go to the statistics department and they'll correct it for you um, because that's well understood. Harder, which is what you need to use your wisdom to to design your experiment, is biases, namely. You need to be very certain that what you're doing is not got some hidden reason that it is not it has a problem. And um, a good example here is if we were doing um, some sort of a survey of, um, of, of people and maybe asking their political opinion again. Um, we said, well, I'll save money by doing my survey in my local town. Say that's Bloomington. Well, the you would save money, and you can say, and if you wanted to do your 1,500 uh, people, which is what Gallup and Rasmussen typically do, you can get your 1,500 people in Bloomington. However, those 1,500 people would not be typical of the rest of the country. It's very unlikely to be, and so you will produce a biased answer. In fact, they're not even Bloomington's not even typical of Indiana. Bloomington, West Lafayette, Indianapolis, and Gary are pretty different from the rest of Indiana. So you will get biased answers if you're trying to predict Indiana, and if you're trying to predict the nation by taking Bloomington. So in the case of physics, you'll get uh, there's other forms of bias, <coughs> uh, which correspond maybe to misunderstanding the experiment. So you you measure things wrong, or you get backgrounds which uh, you will misestimate. So you'll get incorrect estimates of things. Um, and those those are sort of model dependent biases. So this is the hard part of these analyses. All these analyses have some underlying assumptions, and if those assumptions are wrong, the answers are not so good. This next set of slides, or <coughs> which is the last set, uh, correspond to um, showing that. Um, what happens when you uh, do smaller plots with, uh, sorry, s smaller experiments here. We, uh, instead of doing a million people, sorry, instead of doing 10 million people, we do uh, 100,000 people. So we take 250 events and we count them 400 times. Um, and we'll get this rather raggedy looking graph here. Here's the normal, dis the appropriate normal distribution. Here's our histogram um, with 250s living somewhere around here. And it's pretty raggedy. Notice that the top is 10, the square root of 10 is 3. 
and we're roughly on the, I'm so well, these results are not inconsistent with uh, with 10. And so the, you're just seeing the typical fluctuations you will get in any um, experiment of this size. Um, we can uh, actually do do another experiment like this by just rerunning the Python code. Python always gives you different answers by default. That's, we'll discuss that in uh, the next lecture. Um, and so it's again raggedy, but it's just raggedy in a different fashion. So you could say, well, this looks pretty messy. And to actually, if you looked at that and you would tend to say, well, that's we've chosen the wrong bin size for our histogram. We will uh, choose a, a smaller bin size, sorry, a larger bin size. And here we've chosen a bin size, not a one, but a five. And um, now we have around 50 events instead of uh, 10 events. The error is still larger, seven. Square root of 50 is seven. By going to a larger bins, we've only got a factor of root five better, relative better in the error. But still, it looks a lot smoother. And it's uh, probably, a, for, if you happen to do an experiment like this, you, you probably want to use this type of bin size and not the bin size you had at the previous case of one. Really, that's so jet raggedy you couldn't really, really interpret it. So this points out something you need to do with this type of analysis. You need to and you need to think a little carefully about um, um, how to present the data. Uh, this is just the same thing done a second time again with another seed, and it actually looks this one looks a little prettier, but that's just life. It just happens. This one was a little prettier. Runs a Runs are runs. Each run is an independent experiment. You will get different errors each time. So that's the end of that particular discussion. Uh, we will discuss this issue of um, actually Python having different random numbers each time in the next lecture.